Tadadang! Video on George Bernard Shaw. Very important writer, born in 1856. Bernard Shaw was one year bada bhai to Joseph Conrad. Bernard Shaw, as we know, was Irish. Irish playwright. But he originally started with novels that were failures. He became a playwright. Before that, he was also critic, pamphleteer, essayist. He wrote a large number of plays, some 60 plays he wrote. And the prefaces of these plays are also very important. He was a very sharp critic. We know that, right? Lots of witticisms, sharp comments that he made about people and situations. He advocated vegetarianism. Vegetarianism was uh, something that everybody advocated in the West in those times. A very famous writer who was a vegetarian is P.B. Shelley. So Shaw was also uh, advocate of vegetarianism. He was involved in Fabian socialism. Socialism was becoming very popular uh, in the beginning of the 20th century. And Shaw was involved in it. Did you know that he wrote 250,000 letters? My God, we must have sent more uh, WhatsApp messages than that. Anyway, he was the recipient of the Nobel Prize in Literature. In which year was that? 1925. We have to now talk about Shaw's works. All of you know that Shaw was influenced by Henry Ibsen at the time in the Victorian period when Shaw is writing there was a lot of uh, melodrama on Victorian stage proper drama in the literary sense was not there melodrama it was Bernard Shaw and Oscar Wilde who changed this trend the Victorian plays were very artificial, conventional. Shaw and Oscar Wilde started the discussion of ideas, social criticism on Victorian stage and later uh, 20th century stage. Do you know the names of the major figures in drama at this time? I have included them in the encyclopedia. In second volume encyclopedia also I have talked about them. A. W. Pinero. H. A. Jones, Henry Arthur Jones. They tried to reform drama, but to no avail, it was not successful. It was drama of Bernard Shaw and Ibsen that became, you know, a new trend on the English stage. Remember Ibsen, Henrik Ibsen, a doll's house, ghosts, etc. were performed in England. Henry James was involved with this performance. Shaw wrote about Ibsen, the quintessence of Ibsenism. The quintessence of Ibsenism published in 1891. Now, before we talk about the plays, would you like to know what are the major concerns in Shaw's plays? Shall I help you? Well, all of Shaw's plays were social realism, plays of social realism. He depicted social problems with a vein of comedy. Okay, he was angry with the exploitation of the working class and he was a Fabian socialist, an ardent socialist at this time. Remember, did you watch the video on H.G. Wells? Let me find out the truth. If you are watching, you would know that H.G. Wells wrote the new Machiavelli, a play where H.G. Wells depicted Beatrice and Sidney Webb. The founders of Fabian Socialism. Alright, now what is Fabian Socialism? You are wondering what is Fabian Socialism? Fabian Socialism is achieving the ends of Socialism by peaceful means. Achieving a gradual spread of Socialism, equality of people, no private property, all this by peaceful means. Okay? Now, Shaw became a famous writer in the 1880s, 90s and 20th century. And do you know, he was the only man to win an Oscar and a Nobel Prize. Shaw's Pygmalion, 1913 play Pygmalion, was turned into the movie Pygmalion in the 1930s. Pygmalion, the movie, got Oscar. 
Shaw got Oscar for the best screenplay. Later in the 1950s, Pygmalion turned into a musical, My Fair Lady, that is the name of the musical. Now, I have to tell you about his plays, that is what you are waiting for. Shaw wrote some novels before he wrote plays that you know. His first successful play was Widower's Houses. Widower's Houses is a play that deals with slum landlordism. Mrs. Warren's Profession came after this. Mrs. Warren's Profession is a play about Mrs. Kitty Warren who was once upon a time a prostitute. She is now running a brothel. Her daughter Vivian is Vivi rather. Her daughter Vivi is a mathematician. She is interested in a career. She is a new woman. Vivi comes to know about her mother's former life and Vivi is shocked. So this mother-daughter conflict as a result of prostitution is the theme. And Shaw is looking at prostitution from a very unconventional perspective. Shaw is sh saying that prostitution is a social vice engendered by the society. The men engaged in prostitution are also uh, creating it. Of course, it is not the woman who should be blamed alone. That idea is very important, isn't it? And Shaw said it in 1893 play, Mrs. Warren's Profession. In 1894 came Arms and the Man. Arms means weapons. Weapons? It is about war. Arms and the Man is a play about war. It is, Shaw is an iconoclastic playwright. It is a play that makes fun of war. It is a play that makes fun of heroism. Serbia and Bulgaria are fighting. Eastern European countries. And in Bulgaria, there is a woman, Reina. Reina is the daughter of Major Petkov and she is betrothed to the hero Sergius Saranov. She is so romantic, believing in war. One day, did you know what happened? One day into Reina's bedroom jumped a Serbian mercenary soldier. He's actually Swiss, Blanchley. Blanchley looks like a coward. He doesn't have cartridges. <laughs> he is carrying chocolate creams instead of cartridges. Can you believe that? Can anybody win a war with chocolate creams? <laughs> and our Reina learns that war has a different side. Later on, when Sergius Sanonov comes, we know, we understand that he's a flirt. That he doesn't love Raina properly. He's not a genuine guy. And Major Petkov and Sergio Saranov do not know much about war either. It is Blanchely, the mercenary soldier, who is helping these people. Blanchely, even though looks like a coward, he is very clever. Finally, at the end of the play, Raina is going to marry Blanchely, not Sergius. Did you like that? Arms and the Man, that title is a subversion of Of Arms and the Man I Sing, opening of A Need by Virgil. In Virgil, arms are war and heroism are all glorified, it is celebrated. But in uh, Bernard Shaw's play, he is making fun of war and heroism as well as romance did you like that then there is a play candida a mystery it's a satire there is no mystery there james morrell is a very clever public figure he's a clergyman and he is very good at everything he manages his house also very well his wife candida has gone somewhere and he she's coming back with an 18 year old man Eugene Marchbanks and Eugene Marchbanks understand that, understands that James Morrill might look very apparently great in public life but Candida doesn't love him that much probably 
Eugene Marchbanks loves Candida. He tells James Morrill and James Morrill is shocked. And that is when Candida is asked to choose between the two men. What? Candida is furious and she tells them, I'm choosing the weaker of the two. I'm choosing my husband. Because you husband, your greatness, your uh, popularity, your success as a man and as a public figure depended on my being your housekeeper and nurse and mother and I managed everything. You know, in those days, women were not given any recognition or acceptance for running the family. The same thing happens in uh, the case of Nora Helmer in Doll's house. So, women were not considered an equal partner in those days. That is why Candida speaks out against it. Today, we have discussions on whether women should be paid for housework, isn't it? Such discussions are also there. So that is Candida. This is a 19th century play. Amazing play, isn't it? The next is The Devil's Disciple, Man and Superman. Man and Superman is very famous. Man and Superman is about life force. The heroine Anne Whitefield is a new woman. Anne Whitefield. When her father dies, Mr. Whitefield, the daughter is asked to be in the care of Roebuck Ramsden, a venerable old man, a very traditional conservative man, and Jack Tanner, who is an anarchist. Jack Tanner is an anarchist. And uh, he's compared to Don Yuan. There is the third act of this play called Don Yuan in Hell. Don Yuan, J-U-A-N. So, Anne Whitefield realizes that Jack Tanner is the future. I want him. I should marry him. Because then a new woman marrying an anarchist would lead to a generation of supermen, ubermensch. She forces him to marry her. He actually was not willing. So that's a very funny play. All these plays of Bernard Shaw are very funny. And Tanner uh, is unable to stand up against Anne's charm. Eventually, he marries her uh, over her more persistent uh, suitor, Octavius Robinson. Another character was there who was wanting to marry her. Then there is another play, The Doctor's Dilemma. The Doctor's Dilemma is the story of Sir Colenso Rigian. He has developed a cure for tuberculosis, but there is one problem, okay? What is the problem? You, he can treat only 10 people at a time. He has to make a choice between whether he should treat Blenkinsop, an old doctor who can save other people, or he should save Louis Dubedat. He's a playboy and the husband of Jennifer Dubedat. Jennifer Dubedat, this Colenso region secretly loves. If Louis Dubedat dies, Fayda hai, Colenso region ka. Colenso region will be benefited. And Louis Dubedat finally dies because he is put in the care of a funny doctor. But then the real story it, it is. Louis Dubedat and Jennifer were supposed to be so much in love. It looked like they are so much in love, but it seems like they were pretending. The play is against the hypocrisies of the upper class. They don't, they're not straightforward. They don't show the reality. Colin's origin is saved from Jennifer actually. So that is uh, another funny play. A very major play is Pygmalion. Probably you know that Pygmalion was a Greek sculptor and Pygmalion um, made a beautiful sculpture of a woman, Galatia. And the goddess Athena, I think, gave her life. Galatia comes to life. And he falls in love with her. Like that, Henry Higgins is taking a flower girl, Eliza, teaching her pronunciation of standard English and making her look like a duchess. She actually passes as a duchess. People think she's a duchess at an ambassador's garden party. Does good pronunciation make a duchess? That is the theme here. Does good pronunciation make a duchess? So, 
Pygmalion is a story where we are questioning what is class? What do you mean by a gentleman? Who is a lady? And he is making fun of the pretensions of the upper classes. This is a play that is indirectly related to Peregrine Pickle. There also a man is changing, transforming. Do you know who wrote Peregrine Pickle? Picaresque novel by Tobias Smollett. Ta -da -da! Did you like that? Well, Saint John is what we'll talk about next. Just before he got Nobel Prize in 1923, he wrote Saint John. In 1925, he got Nobel Prize. Saint John is Joan of Arc. Remember, this is a play set in 15th century France. And after that in England and then in the dream of a king also. So all these are their settings. In the 15th century, a peasant girl, John, heard some voices probably of God, which prompted her to go and ask the French king to give her an army because in the Hundred Years War, she wanted to fight against the English. At first, she doesn't get anything. But then she is given the army. The French were losing at that time. And then, oh my God, in the siege of Orleans, in the battle of Orleans, Joan of Arc wins the battle against the English. And she wins a few other battles also. You know, the men in the army did not like that. The French as well as the English men went to the church, proved that she is probably possessed by the devil. And St. John was excommunicated, burned at stake for the suspicion that she is in conjunction with the devil. She is uh, in collaboration with the devil. She dies. And then after some years, she is acquitted. And then in the 20th century, she is given sainthood. Joan appears in the dream of the French king and questions everybody. Oh, you have made me a saint. What do I gain from it? Can you give me back my life? Can you give me back what I have lost? The men have no reply. <laughs> they just leave. So, humanity is never quite ready for its saints. Do you understand? That is the story of St. John. Now there are many more plays, 60 plays. The apple cart is based on democracy. King Magnus is cleverly defeating the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister wants democracy. He wants to stand against the King and depose the King. The King says, good, I am willing to Take part in the elections. I will be a candidate. It is obvious that he will win because he is a great king. So, democracy is not tyranny. It is not tyranny of the people. Even a king can be a good ruler if he gives priority to the people, which the prime minister is not doing, but the king is doing. Then there is Major Barbara. Major Barbara is about... Um, Charity, it is about, there's a Salvation Army worker, Barbara, who is the protagonist. It is about whether people engaged in war, making ammunition, etc. Are they good people? Can they do charity? It is about money, it is about uh, mo moral and ethical issues related to war and charity. These are the important plays of Bernard Shaw. Are you interested in knowing what are Shaw's novels? Irrational knots, immaturity, love among the artists. These are some of the major novels of Bernard Shaw. Bernard Shaw has also written short stories. The Black Girl in Search of God and Some Lesser Tales he has written. His short stories could also be important. Now, let me summarize about the plays of Bernard Shaw. Bernard Shaw was an iconoclast. What do you mean by that? He broke idols. 
he broke the expectations of the society he broke expected values and perceptions Bernard Shaw wrote drama of ideas which were also called problem plays also written by Ibsen he took up moral issues social issues of morality from the society discussed them and very importantly his characters would emerge as mouthpieces he would also try to solve some of these problems he would try to give some solutions also so drama of ideas transformed the victorian stage and 20th century stage he was an irish man he lived at a time when two other irishmen were also there i will talk about them in another video jm singe and shawn o'casey make sure you watch that video please because they are very important playwrights and bernard shaw wrote with realism and satire he made his stark social themes palatable with humor and these discussion plays had long discussions in the preface itself the preface uh, or the prologue to the plays were also very important shaw dissected the 20th century society especially the upper classes and he depicted class struggle between upper and lower classes that is a very important theme in bernard shaw so he became a very major writer he lived a very pretty long life do you know shaw lived from 1856 to 1950 wow that's a long life and he supported not only realism but also ibsenite naturalism naturalism is a style related to realism that ibsen introduced on european stage so that is all about bernard shaw i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you are inspired to read some of his very humorous plays they are amazing plays thank you all for your continuous support and love my love to all of you and blessings and prayers for an amazing career do your work and you will get there i know bye bye see you soon